Hello, Bill Molino here on this July 7th, 2024 at the Gettysburg Miniature to Soldier Shop with Goober the Traveling Bear. And we are doing another Gettysburg Miniature Toy Soldier Shop video here to see what Mr. John has in the shop. And I hear his new diorama is none other than Fort Apache. That's right, Fort Apache. All of you that love Fort Apache from the Marks time period, that's what I hear is inside. So let's follow Goober in and see what's new in the shop. Oh my gosh, Mr. John is working and he's got Goober at the front counter. Mr. John, what's new at the Gettysburg shop this July of 2024? Uh, quite a few things. You can't really call this work though, Bill. But uh, anyway, I'm here enjoying it, enjoying the holiday weekend here. Town is full of people, really nice families. You know, it's always a pleasure to see. It's one of the things that keeps me going here. Uh, we filled up the store, but we've had a lot of uh, business this weekend. So we got some holes here and there, but we'll work on filling them up. It's always good to see you, Bill. Got a new diorama set up in here, a little Fort Apache, 54 millimeter, almost all plastic. And, uh, you remember that old, I think it's 1954, the John Wayne uh, and Henry Fonda movie, which was great. <clears throat> anyway, um, so what's this diorama on, Mr. John? This is a 54 millimeter, almost all plastic painted figures, Fort Apache. The, the fort is a Barzo fort, which has uh, been retired for a while, but it's a uh, super nice piece, always fun to set up. The hills come from W. Britton's from their little round top set and uh, wagons and most of the figures are Marks or BMC and also Paragon miniatures which uh, really paint up nice and uh, we'll probably run it as a game I just I started out making it smaller but I just kept adding stuff so it turned into a monster but uh, anyway we like to wow the kids they like to see all the color and the, and the figures set up so that's what we enjoy doing all right, well, I'll get some close-ups of it. Sure. All right, everyone. Mr. John has me doing the, the video of our... Boy, this this is just an incredible Fort Apache attack. I mean, let's get us some close-ups. I mean, there are... Marks and BMC in here. I think I see some Conti, some Swapits. I think these are Aerofix. I mean, Mr. John has it all here. I love the, the cavalrymen on the on the roof. These got troopers heading out. I mean, just incredible. And then. It looks like we have a wagon train or supply train coming through. We got dead horses. I mean, Mr. John did not forget a thing in this in this war game. All right, we'll go a little slower. Just just incredible. And you gotta remember, this took probably three or four hours at least to set up. This was not a an hour process. All right, we'll pause here. All right, everyone. Um, lots of requests for me to try to go slower. Um, I got here very early, so. I'm hoping uh, we won't have customers at 8.30 in the morning yet. and uh, But I will do my best to try to hit these cabinets a little slower. So here's some Zulus. And artillery galore. I mean... If I was to take the time to spend even two or three minutes per display case here, 
I probably have an hour video. I mean, there is just so much inventory here. Now, if you're looking for the BMC play sets, he's got Gettysburg, Alamo, Yorktown, Battleground. He has several Bojess Legion Air Forts. And what's amazing, every time I am here, everything has changed. Um, he's constantly getting in new inventory. So, Encounter at Hanover. I mean, I don't even know what that is. Let's go take a look at that. And So, Encounter at Hanover. We're going to ask Mr. John what the heck that is. Uh, it looks like it uh, could be some kind of Civil War game at Hanover, Pennsylvania. And, of course, we're hitting more of the pegboards here, the 54s and 172nds. I mean, and you have to laugh. Uh, Mr. John has product floor to ceiling, and that's no joke. He's got big elephants. Walt needs elephants, so the chuckleheads. I know he talked about needing elephants. Wow. Trying to go slow, everyone. Now, if you need some stuff for Rourke's Drift, Mr. John has the Rourke's Drift wagon from uh, the old Conti set and all the Redoubt pieces, sandbags, and biscuit boxes. Very cool. It's also got a 54 millimeter log house up there. These cabins are incredible. They are really nice. And if you're wondering, they look to be about $85, roughly. That was, I'm sure they all have individual prices, but that gives you an idea. And we'll come over here to this side. And if you collect Airfix marks, BMC armies in plastic. This is the shop for you. And once again, there is, I mean, he has astronauts here. I mean, it's physically impossible to get everything on video. Now, what do you say we go into the other room and the main, the main gallery, I guess I'll call it, and we'll check that out. Mr. John is stocking shelves right now. He's always working. Plus his assistant, Goober the Traveling Bear, is here. And oh my gosh, the Battle for White of Weiss Fork, the second Battle of Kinston by Bill Molyneux Games, is here at Mr. John's shop. And I really need to say thank you to Mr. John and his son, John Jr., for carrying Bill Molyneux Games. Um, they have my entire collection here including the Struggle for New France, the New War 1812. So if you're looking for my games and you live near Gettysburg, stop and see Mr. John. Now, he also carries a wide selection of older board war games that are out of print. And it's quite a amazing. I see Gunslinger by Avalon Hill back here. And that was a big hit when I was in uh, high school. And those of you that are looking for a copy of the Terrible Swift Sword, there it is. And now we're going to hit the... Uh, we'll continue along this line, the Perry Miniatures. The Victrix. And then, of course, we have endless amounts of painted 132nd 54 millimeter figures and the Revolutionary War case we'll step to the right and we have American Civil War there's the Zouaves Confederate troops in gray and butternut 
French Indian War and look at all the Highlanders. We have more. Mr. John has more armor than the Tank Museum in Great Britain. Just amazing of so much inventory. Well today I'm going right to left in the back aisle for a change and of course we have to mention the IMAX Toy Soldier Company owned by Bill Molyneux but the Bill Molyneux of Brooksville, Florida not this Bill Molyneux. I always like joking around about that and he also produces remote control tanks. Now if you're into collectible board war games and strategy and tactics Mr. John has several plastic tubs of those. Um, you can uh, come into the shop and go through them. And as we continue along if you watched last month's video you saw that these shelves were really packed. In fact I'm noticing you can see this black bar where just a month ago um, you didn't even know that bar was there. This boxes of toy soldiers were piled so high. All right. Um, in fact, there was a lot of Star Wars product right through here. That's all gone. Um, if you do see something in the video, they can mail order it to you. But uh, I have found product here moves quickly. Uh, the pegboard over here has a lot of 15 millimeter metal figures and 28s again. And when you come here, you really need to look. There's Cape Canaveral playset. I mean, and a B-17 right below it. The Battles of Napoleon. Please ask for assistance. It's and then Mr. John has a small library of history books and miniature wargaming books for research. Now I'm dealing with some sun glare so I'm not sure how that will be. And of course everyone loves Navarone, the Mark's playset that was two feet tall or more. And I know Mr. John uh, and I both have received requests to go slower on these display cases. So here's some Romans. Now I get a bit of glare from display cases with my camera but I'll do the best I can. Some American Revolutionary War troops and now there is a lot of World War II up here and I have several requests to go slower so let's see how I do this time so we have some Vietnam vehicles here now there's a really neat Italian tank Africa core stuff. Some more Vietnam era. Okay, everyone, I'm nearly crawling on the floor to get you this video of Matilda and the Stewart, and then we'll slide over. I don't even know what that German half track is. I've, that's very unique. There's a useless British Crusader tank. If you played the game Avalon Hills to Brook, those things would go up really quickly in that board game. We got a Sherman. Vietnam figures. I'll pause the camera here. And here we have a a gun you would see at D-Day and I actually visited those when I was in France a decade ago and then we have a really cool Stuart tank 
We have another Matilda down there. Really cool Rolls Royce armored car. I mean, that is really nice. And Mr. John Ken, throw these in boxes with good packing and get them safe and sound to you. And uh, the Italian tanks are very nice. And there's an Italian self-propelled uh, tank. And that's, I've never seen one of those in 54 millimeter. So that's really cool. And crawling along the floor, there's a Panzer II back there. How cool is that? So if you're doing early war, now I gotta pause the camera while I try to stand up again. But we will hit this Panther, Sherman Firefly. I think that's a Puma back there, everyone. And then over here, we have some German half tracks, another armored car. And we'll pause here. All right, and the Sand Pebbles gunboat is still here for sale. And then we have our German infantry half track, American infantry. There's an Eisenhower and a MacArthur. Oh. Now we're switching over to the next area and we have Flames of War, another military board war or miniature rule sets and of course we have another play set, San Juan Hill. Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. And if you need paints for your figures, here they are. And it's display case after display case. Now, way at the top, I've done a, this in previous videos, but I'll do it again. Mr. John has the old Milton Bradley games of Broadsides, Empire, Shogun, Axis and Allies, Fortress America. And then the Tin Lithgow Wild West Marks buildings. And I think I think that was from the Gangster G-Man Mark set there. But how cool is that? You could come in here and get an entire western town in an instant. Alright everyone, um, we're gonna keep plugging along. Believe it or not, so Mr. John has so much inventory, sometimes when I'm narrating I lose track of what I'm looking at and I see something else. Um, he has a lot of a lot of models too that have come in. A lot of flames of war, bolt action, He's got the Travel Battle Perry Miniatures War Game in a Box. I know several people that love that. They take that on vacations. Um, I don't think Lisa and my wife would be happy if I brought that along on vacation. Now, down along the bottom are a lot of board war games again. Um, it's a uh, impossible for me to rattle them all off. There's Richtofen's War, Wizard's Quest by Avalon Hill, Luftwafter, Tobruk, we were just talking about Luf, um, Tobruk, and the Blue and the Gray Quad. That's a, a nice little game for um, to get people into the hobby. Attack there's just so much, so much to see here. World War II Pacific Theater of Operations, SBI, Blackbeard. PQ-17, Partisan. My goodness. This, and look at, back there and hidden away is a copy of 
Avalon Hills award winning 1776. All right. Now up here we have plastic toy soldiers 132nd 54 millimeter. Here's a 54 millimeter set of IMAX. We've come back through here. There's a Japanese Zero. And the next thing we'll hit is our pegboard. Because Mr. John needs to open up the store this Sunday morning. So we'll start here. We have bags of endless amounts of Civil War figures in different styles. Uh, these are BMC, I believe. And if you just need artillery and limbers, he has that too. And if you need trucks for World War II, he has them also. American Revolution in 54. So if you have the Yorktown playset, but you want to add to it, and what's neat about Mr. John's shop is, look at this, we're going to remove the Rev War figures, and then, wham, there's a German 88. When you're here, you really need to look through all the nooks and crannies, because it's almost like uh, Christmas every time I'm here visiting. Now, these are very unique. Fortress Artillery. Now, these could be used for anything in the Civil War. French Indian War and Rev War. Very, very nice. And I gotta say, at $16, $8 a cannon, and that size, and we even get some gunners, um, that's a great deal. All right, we have one more display case to hit. And there's a little tiny castle down here at the bottom. And we'll, uh, we're going to hit the last display case and close out. All right, everyone. Well, we're going to hit, oh my goodness, you know, before I hit the display cases, if you need a big figure, he has those too. But uh, the collectibles he has here are incredible. Look at these. Are those nice or what? Now I'm going to head over here. There's a, look at that. There's a, a priest right here on Sunday morning. All right, I'm going left to right this time in this display case. And I know I went too fast the last time. Now you can pause your camera or your, whatever you're watching this on, your computer. But I will go slower. And, I mean, the world of tanks is right here in Gettysburg in Mr. John's miniature shop. And then you go up, try to get rid of that glare. I don't even know, I don't know if that's a martyr back there or what that is. There's a Stug, or a Stug, Matilda, and then he has some really neat 172nd, 176th scale armor back there. Now I'm going to pause the camera to get to the next display case, because I'm crawling around on my hands and knees to make this video. Alright, as we hit this side, there's a tank destroyer. That's a very unique vehicle back there. And we have a landing craft, a duck, another Stug. Is that Telly Savalas' tank from Battle of the Bulge, a Chaffee? There's a Stuart and a building. Just amazing. Well, Mr. John, thank you for letting me visit and making another video. Um, how would you like to close this out? Well, first, thanks for coming in, Bill. Always appreciate it. And I know people really like your videos, so it's really nice of you to do that. 
Uh, also, there's a few dates. There's a uh, toy soldier show here on August the 25th. It's really nice. It's at the Eisenhower Hotel here in Gettysburg. And also, uh, W. Britons is having a symposium here in August on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's a great, great uh, show they put on. Are, are both of those events in the, at the Eisenhower? Uh, the Toy Soldier Show is at the Eisenhower. The Britain Symposium is at a, uh, a tank uh, museum that's right outside of town. I'm sure if you go on the W. Britain's website, they'll give you perfect directions to get there. Uh, and also, uh, the real nice thing is Little Round Top reopened. They've uh, spent a long time working on it, but it is really nice. And anyone who can get here to see the new, uh, the new work that they've done, I uh, highly recommend it. All right. Well, we took Mr. John's advice, and we went up and checked out Little Round Top, and you can watch that video also on this channel. But we'd like to close this out with uh, Goober the Traveling Bear and Mr. John saying stay safe, be kind, be courteous. Thank you, Mr. John, for letting us visit. And please subscribe and share my videos. Hello, Bill Molino here for Bill's History World with none other than Goober the Traveling Bear. And we are on top of Little Round Top in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Now, this is a pivotal position during the Battle of Gettysburg, especially on the second day. And if you've watched the movie Gettysburg, you know all about the 20th Maine. And we're going to walk over to that monument. But right now, you are seeing the rock outcropping. Well, that's Devil's Den. And the Confederate sharpshooters would be firing up here and firing on these cannons, the gunners and the officers. And several Union officers were killed up here on Little Round Top. Now our Union line stops here at Little Round Top and then follows for a good mile or mile and a half along the line. And here's a, a new map because Little Round Top's been totally redone. And you can see how you are here. All right, well, Goober and I are going to go look to the savior of Gettysburg, as many would call him, G.K. Warren statue. Well, here we are at the General Warren statue, and this is what he saw, and the Signal Corps, he is a Union officer, and he is an engineer officer. And G.K. Warren saw how critical this position was and he hurried troops up here as quickly as he could and you can see the Union lines out there there's the Pennsylvania Monument all right well this is a different point of view from Little Round Top and there is G.K. Warren. And then, of course, Goober the Traveling Bear says you need to visit Gettysburg. And don't forget, this video is helping to raise money for the Gettysburg Foundation. A little note on the artillery pieces here. Um, Battery D, 5th U.S. Artillery. And these are 10-pounder parrots. You can see by the reinforced breech. Okay. And of course, Little Round Top has just been totally revamped. 
I say the the work the Park Service did here is incredible and I am very happy that the money from this YouTube video that I'll make will get donated to the Gettysburg Foundation to help in projects like this. And there's Devil's Den. Don't give an itch. General Warren's call for help. Colonel Strong Vincent and his 1300 man Union Infantry Brigade rushed to defend this hill and arrived none too soon just as his men took position on the slopes below you, Texas and Alabamans of the General John B. Hood's division streamed out of the woods to your left. Rapid deadly fire from Vincent's line drove them back, but Hood's men rallied and renewed the fight. Well, here we have Colonel Patrick O'Rourke's monument, and there are some that say you get good luck by rubbing his nose. I have no idea, but we'll see if Goober is blessed with a lottery ticket or something. All right, now, we're coming up to a very large monument on Little Round Top. And of course, it overlooks little round top look at that what a beautiful view and here we have the 44th New York Infantry 5th Corps what do you say we uh, we go up and this is a beautiful monument and As you can see, you have the list. You can't. The names of the men that fought here on Little Round Top. All right, we'll attempt the staircase. No. Well, we're up here at the top of the castle, and it's just beautiful and pristine out here. And of course, during July 2nd and 3rd, not so much so in 1863. All right, well, we're back down at ground level, and the Union troops built quite a bit of breastworks through here piling up anything they could find, give them extra cover. All right, well, Goober said, so let's go find the 20th Maine Monument, where Chamberlain gives the order to fix bayonets. All right, hold to the last. Responding to the crisis at Little Round Top and without waiting for approval from his commanding officer, Union Colonel Strong Vincent took the responsibility of taking the brigade here. This is where he entrusted Joshua Chamberlain of the 20th Maine to hold the extreme far left of the line for the Union Army. Now we are going out to the 20th Maine Monument and what's interesting about this monument is it's on the far left almost back side of Little Round Top. So when you're at Little Round Top where we were just at, you actually have to cross the path, the street, get on this path, and walk down Little Round Top to the left rear. So um, it's not in the front of Little Round Top where all the monuments are. All right. And the 20th Maine 
As Goober is reading this sign, late on the second day, the 386 men of Colonel Joshua Chamberlain's 20th Maine Volunteers were anchored here on the far left. And then, of course, our Alabamas and Colonel William Oates of the 15th Alabama, 44th Alabama, I think 47th. And they had orders to take Little Round Top. Well, let's, uh, and I gotta say, all the work the Park Service has done to revamp Little Round Top is amazing. Let's continue our walk to the 20th Main Monument. All right, well, we have made it to the Little Round Top 20th Main Monument. And there's no one here at the moment. And I'll give you a, a slowly pan and you can see that there's the road intersection. If you go to the left of that road, you're going up Big Round Top. You go straight down that road, you're going to Devil's Den. And then if you follow the road to the right, that's to the top of Little Round Top. All right, I'm very fortunate there is no tourists here. Even at 7.30 in the morning, there was a lot of tourists at Little Round Top on the other side. So this monument is for the 20th Maine. And 20th Maine, 3rd Brigade, 1st Division, 5th Corps. And it's a beautiful June 7th, 2024. The Goober and I are here trying to help promote history. Well, the sacrifice that the Union soldiers made to hold this line and the tales of this far left flank are really well portrayed in the movie Gettysburg. And if you haven't seen the movie Gettysburg or you're not into Civil War long movies because it's a long movie, I would at least say consider watching it and just maybe go to the section of Little Round Top and watch that part of the movie because what they did here was an amazing feat and our little tour of Little Round Top we're going to conclude here and say as Goober would say stay safe be kind, be courteous, visit a historic site near you. And if you do come to Gettysburg, go to the far left side of Little Round Top and visit the 20th Main Monument and see where that area, where the area is where the 20th Main held. Thank you again. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you.